What's going on, everyone? Darvin Ham, is he a good coach? That's the question I get time and time again. And so many people are just on his helmet, right? I see so many comments of people that just want Darvin Ham fired, want him gone, want him replaced. And like my first thought is like, who? For who? Like, who are you going to get? Like, Ime Adoku? Sure. Like, you know, but can one, he keep it in his, you know what, right? Um, beyond that, it's like, what, Quinn Snyder? I don't really want him. As like an assistant, sure. But it's like, who? You know, like, what, one of the Van Gundys? There's a reason they're not coaches. Mark Jackson? Go look up what Mark Jackson did and why he's basically been blackballed from coaching ever again. Like, he did some bad stuff, right? Like, and just, who are you going to get? Like, Darvin Ham hasn't been a perfect coach by any means. He's had his hiccups. He's had his rookie mistakes. He's lost a couple games. He's had some rough moments. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. No questions asked. But he's also done pretty good given what he has. It's not like he's had this star-studded cast, this, like, just elite team. He had this, like, super team that he's just botched and just caused to fall apart and all of that. No, no. You know, like, he hasn't had his two best guys for, like, half the season. And then on top of not having his best guys, it's like, who's left? You know, like, what, like who are you, are you supposed to play Thomas Bryant, winning Gabriel, and Troy Brown for 48 minutes? Right? It's like, if Le, like LeBron's already playing 40 minutes a game. What, are you supposed to play him 48? It's, like, it's not like he had this, like, incredible roster that was uh, it's just like, man, he has so much depth. What is he going to do? Right. I mean, we were we were having conversations prior of like what which one of these guys would start on another team? <laughs> and that's what he has to work with. How many of these guys would be on a on a roster, even in a rotation? Right? Like that's what he had to work with. And on top of that, you look at the new cast and you look at the new team. And now the conversation's like, man, how do we get all these guys minutes? That wasn't a conversation we were having a couple weeks ago, right? Like, that was a completely different conversation. But Darvin Ham's got to figure that out. That's a challenge in and of itself. Plus, build chemistry. Plus, you know, make the right calls. Make the right rotations. Find out what guys... And he doesn't have a full offseason, a full training camp, a full preseason. He has 23 games to figure it out. That is a tall order for any coach. I don't care how great you are. Like... You have to figure out which guys are the best rotation, which guys work well the best, which lineups make the most sense, right? Yes, I didn't like the three to four guard lineups. I didn't. It wasn't a fan of mine. Um, but again, what, like, what else do you do when your entire roster is six foot guards? Like at some point, you're going to have to run three or four of them, right? And Darvin Ham now... If he does run a three or four guard lineup, it's much different. It's not, you know, Russell Westbrook, Dennis Schroeder, uh, you know, uh, Lonnie Walker and Reeves, right? It, or or Kendrick Nunn. Now it's like D'Lo, who's got some size. Beasley, who's got some size. Austin Reeves, who's got some size. Troy Brown, who's got some size, right? Like you got all these guys now. I don't mind multiple guard lineups like so many people and I just think it's because they had to watch a season of just like a bunch of guards and so anytime they see multiple guards they just immediately explode but there's a big difference between three guard lineups we had a couple weeks ago and three guard lineups we have now now the three guard lineups they can shoot they can all play make they can all defend they all got good size it's it's a different scenario than before Right. And on top of that, you you have the you have the rotations and you have the obvious guys. Right. Like the starting lineup that we started with against the Pelicans made all the sense in the world. Most teams do run multiple guard lineups. I hate to break it, but it happens. I mean, the Warriors run four guards all the time. I mean, even when we played them, we ran four. They, they ran four guards against us. You know, DiVincenzo, Clay Thompson, uh, Jordan Poole. Uh, you know, like it, it just how it goes. You they run Steph, Clay, Pool, Divincenzo all the time, right? Because all those guys they can shoot, they can do multiple things. Well, now we have a team that can do that. 
You know, I don't mind Dennis Schroeder and D'Lo sharing the court at times because they both provide different things, right? But not like 40 minutes. But again, that goes into the rotation. That goes into figuring out what works and what doesn't. So matchups also, right? Like if you're playing the Warriors, it makes sense to match up size-wise, right? Especially when you can with the talent, right? Like if you can put... You know, like Dennis Schroeder and, and D'Lo were killing them. Why? Because they, they matched up size-wise, athleticism, shooting, all of those things. My point is, is that Darvin Ham now can do a lot of the things that he wants to do, and it'll work, and it'll seem like, oh, it worked. Darvin Ham was play, making play calls. Darvin Ham was running sets. Darvin Ham was doing all the stuff he's doing now. He's doing it earlier. The difference is he didn't have a team and a roster to do so. Like so many people were like, why are you always sticking up for Darvin Ham? And it's like, because like, watch the games, understand the ins and outs of the game, understand what he has to work with. And now look at the roster he has now, right now. He doesn't really have any excuse other than like chemistry, right? But look at what he's done, right? So many people point to the Portland game, can't point to the Portland game. What adjustment could he have done to fix that? What what could he, he... They could have gotten Michael Jordan in their prime. If the Portland Trailblazers play that way, they go 82-0 every game. But guess what happened? They did it. They beat the Lakers. They shot that way against the Lakers. And then they followed up with a dud because they, they just blew everything into the Lakers. Pause. <laughs> but no, seriously, like... There's nothing you can do when a team's shooting that hot, and it happens. I mean, who was it? Wasn't it the didn't the Celtics lose by like forty or fifty to the Thunder because the Thunder just couldn't miss? And it wasn't Damian Lillard. Like if it was just Dame, like if Damian was like ten of eleven, and it was like, come on, dude, like stop this guy, and like they only had like ten threes, then yeah, like what is Darvin Ham doing? You know, double, triple team, or make somebody else beat you. But that's not what happened. They made twenty three three pointers. Damian Lillard had eight of them. They were shooting like 80% from three at one point. All you can do in that situation is hope that they cool off. That's it. And they never did. But you look at like the Warriors game. He coached that perfectly. Look at the Pelicans game. He coached that perfectly. Had solid rotations. Knew and knew what he was doing on the offensive end and the defensive end. His team executed it perfectly. To perfect the first game they had together. First game they had together as a new team, they went in, in Golden State, who had only lost six games at that point, in Golden State, and made them look like just a novice team, and just totally controlled that game, and got it done, right? Then we play the Pelicans, again, first game fully healthy, and we went in, and we dominated start to finish. They went on the little run, but in my opinion, at no point did I feel like we were like going to lose this game. Before, it was like, oh no, oh no, we're losing the lead. You know how this is going to go. They're going to come back. They're going to beat us. I didn't feel that way this that game. You know, they, they threw their punches. We responded. We never lost the lead. You know, we controlled, dominated that game, made things difficult. Darvin Ham executed, had a game plan knew what the strategy was, you know, just, you know, he called timeouts at the proper time. He he didn't allow the other teams to go on huge major runs. He let guys stay in that were hot. Second half, he, he tightened up the rotation, which is what you're supposed to do. Did a great job. And he has a lot to figure out. A lot. For any coach, it would be tough. My point is, and the reason I want to make this video, is we got to give him time. Give him a chance. Right? Let, let's see what he can do now with a real roster and a real team with actual sets that he can actually run and players that he can actually trust and players that can actually execute the way that he needs them to execute. All of those things. We didn't have that a couple weeks ago. Right, The set, the offense that he was trying to run, our team wasn't built for that. It wasn't. And now we have a roster that is built for that. And you're seeing it. You're seeing the execution. You're seeing the ball movement. You're seeing them. They're averaging like 30 assists a game, which is crazy. I mean, you're talking 
dynasty warrior numbers when they were going on their run. And this is a brand new team that hasn't even played together. And that's because of Darvin Ham's play set and his setups and his and all of those things. Now, is he the greatest coach ever? No, but he's a rookie coach. Yes, he's going to have more mistakes. He's going to have things. But I think this team is good enough to weather those storms and still come out ahead. And I do think he's a good enough coach to show and dominate uh, the things that we need him to do. But time will tell. I'm not saying believe Darvin Ham is going to be the next Phil Jackson. I'm not saying that. I don't know. All I'm saying is, like, let's give this guy a chance with the real roster and see what he can actually do. Those are my thoughts and opinions. But as always, is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. What do you think? What do you think of Darvin Ham? Do you think he's got it? Um, you know, if you're one of the people in the camp that want him gone, for who? For who? Ime Adoku is probably the only one that I think would make sense. Other than that, who else? But anyway, let me know down in the comments below.